Still working on my tunnel vision on stream. I think it's gotten a lot better though. How much is your deck worth pack-wise? Uh, it depends on the price of Bolton, I guess. I think Bolton the Den is probably the most expensive ones. I'm not sure about the rest of them. But you can get a lot of the cards just in the Battle Team deck that uh, was released with Pikachu. I think Bolton Bench Death Tom was definitely correct. I think so too, but I'm not. I'm still not 100 percent sure about it. Because I would still be a li in a little rough spot to find boss to close it out on the next turn again, right? So if I went research, I would uh, most likely still have boss. Because I would have a new hand. And then I had a chance of getting stamp as well. It was kind of close call. They will only need one card then, right? Opposed to a bigger combo. But again, they had a big hand. So. Uh, we draw another card. Yeah. Crobat is the most expensive card. Crobat, really? Hmm. Peak was likely to die if guested. It just so happened to get stuck and give them one more counter on Tom's. Yeah. But if it died, then they wouldn't have that other turn, right? And that was that was a big deal. To basically just say pass for a turn. Yeah, but you don't need to bling out the deck, right? That's the thing. <laughs> I thought you meant if you wanted to build the deck yourself and just to have to play the deck. All right, so we go up against Blacephalon. That's another kind of matchup where it's uh, about more how good your opponent draws and not how good you draw. That's kind of the name of the game when you're playing this deck, though. Oh, the Dene already. The Dene without discarding any energy. Hmm. That's usually not a great play, but. Corvette is at least 19 packs. That's a lot of packs, not gonna lie. If we continue in this pace, we're gonna take way too many losses, right? Can't lose every third game. That uh, that won't work out. All right. Now that I have a big hand. I want a Marnie if possible. Let's see, Mewtwo is a good card, has a lot of HP. We have four money in the deck. And Coco. So I'm thinking it's okay to uh, just go to Denner right away. Nothing really much else we need for the turn. And yeah, we don't really lose important resources here. Just trying to buy some time. There is Marnie on point and Coco actually. Very good. And then we go Marnie and then we try to set up for boss on the following turn again. Alright, that's a quick pull for Elder Gods for boss. So, so far so good. I want to push with uh, the Bolton as long as possible as well. Also, depending on what they do, yeah. Because we could be targeting down double pricers. Pika, Pikaram doesn't need Crobat to buy, you can cut it if it's too expensive. Yeah, you don't have to play Crobat in deck, but it is a big help, especially because you are allowed to play a lot of radars, and radars tins your hand very efficiently compared to other decks. So Crobat becomes um, almost a better than in a lot of cases. So you want to save it for that big push turn. Okay, they're spreading out energies, so I don't think they're even trying to go for the kill here. We're just trying to set up a little more before going in. All right, so we are killing A 
don't think we have enough energies in the deck for this game actually for doing the optimal setup with tag bolt that I want to do. So we're gonna have to do it a little bit slower, I guess. Yeah, they're doing a good split of energies here. A net. They want they want they want to donate a blood cephalon. I have switch again. I'll never cut in deck, it just means if it's working on Burchett, 20 packs can be used somewhere else in deck before getting a crowbat. That is very true, Tom Chap. I agree. Definitely uh, a very reasonable argument. All right. So the thing here is um, if I kill if I kill the Dene, then the energies they put this awkwardly are going to continue to be a little awkward. Uh, and also they would have a problem if they bench a Cory, I guess. Hmm, let's see. If I kill this, then we're more than likely dying. If I don't kill it, there is a kind of good shot we're not dying next turn, actually. So I think, think I like that. Kinda want to do the uh, Coco Pop on two tag teams because then I can actually charge both of them in time. But to do that, I have to get rid of my stamp because I I don't want to break uh, off of the prices here. So I need to keep the radar. I feel like. Let's see. It has to be peak. The speed does 200 for three, and that's better than anything else we can do for three. Let me switch that out. Uh, none, so yeah. I think it has to be peak. Charging the boys, and we killed the Dene. I mean, not even 100% to die here, so... Because they, they're playing it safe, trying to sack Placephalon so they can pick up energies and stuff. But now, they have to have hit um, energy for Placephalon, and then for more energies. And this only picks up two. And there's no energy in this card pile still. So this makes it a little awkward for them to get the kill here. And if they miss the kill again, the game is over, so... Great point about the hand tinning though. Yeah, it's um, it's really good in Pika, especially. Which makes the Crobat much more efficient in this deck. All right, they have a Volder on the uh, Blacephalon. Let's see how many energy they managed to get though. I mean, they can still definitely get there, right? But this makes it a little harder for them. They got the radar off the prices though. So I could have kept the stamp in retrospect. Um, but I wanted to play it safe. All right, switching to Blacephalon, but only the one with two energies though. It's kind of tells me... Okay, okay, okay. I mean, that's still much better for us, right? Because if I kill the Blacephalon, then they wouldn't have to do that play. And now I got an extra price for the same play. They can plan against the Turnitus. Uh, be a little bit lucky. So, they have to miss two turns, I think. We um, figured out if you want to win. 
So they could miss hand attachment turn one. They could miss the VMAX turn two. They could miss enough bench Pokemon turn two. Uh, or they can miss uh, from Paralyze. And if they miss from Paralyze, they could also miss from Boss after your GX attack with the same Pokemon. So, like, at one of these key points in time, they have to miss if you want to win. Or, like, two of them, I mean. So they have, like, four or five sh shots of missing, different things here. And if one of those happens, then you win. But if not, then they win. That's a kill. All right. So now we're looking for Marnie, and then we got uh, Blitz. We don't have enough energies left, though. So normally I could set up for Tag Voltaire and then just win, but uh, unfortunately that's not an option right now. Let's see. Yeah, there's only one energy left here, right? So a little bit annoying. Three, four, five, eight, nine. Only priced one energy, though. But we got rid of a lot of them early, so not uh, not optimal. So here, let's see. So yeah, I can kill kill it with Blitz anyway, right? They kill us. And I stamp to one kill or a choreo, best case, I think. I was considering using the right ship because then I need one more energy, right? Oh my god. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. I mean, it's not uh, always uh, meant to be. Hmm. Let's see. So with this hand, I guess we could kill Oricorio right now. We get killed back anyway. They always have Velder with this amount of hand. If we kill Oricorio, then the stamp next turn would be a lot better, at least. So we're just gonna tag bolt him, and then we need something after prices. Lightning is good start. Radar is not great though, because we still have the Dana in price, so it doesn't actually end break us here. Okay, they can also get Cramorant, but if they bench Cramorant in advance here, they lose to a boss again. So they probably don't want to do that. So this play also forces them into not being able to bench Cramorant, which is pretty good. Yeah, the one plus GX was the play, I think, Yippie. They're thinking though. So maybe, maybe they did something. To throw them off. <laughs> Still have a big hand though. Would be much better if this hand was four cards. I guess I could, I could have gambled on the prices and kept the uh, kept the stamp, discarded the radar on two turns ago. Oh, I do not like e switches in this version. Oh, don't misunderstand me, Panage. I love e switches in this version, but I just had to cut things. Uh, to find space for all the consistency I wanted. And I had to cut these switches. If we could play some more cards, these switches would be great, and Big Charm would be great as well. Definitely help. I also want the third stamp as one of the probably 64th card right now. The e switches is, uh, is a good card in here.
Yeah, we're getting to comical level of consistency. But you can see that it's still not quite enough, right? Because now we're sitting here and we might lose just because we don't have access to stamp because we got into a dry hand again. It's mainly because it lasted an ace here though, which blocks our ball outs or like the radar outs. Yo, what? <laughs> All right, quick ball. What are we picking up? Cramorant? It is Cramorant. But if you bench that, then you lose the boss. Not that we have a boss, but you still lose the, <laughs> the boss. Okay. <laughs> I'm really confused. All right, so that's a grammar with two energies. I mean, I see that. That's a crystal. Also about time people just want to lose. Can't lose the boss if you know they don't have it. That's true though. I think that's a snipe. Like you pause for four minutes and then check if your front has boss and then you bench that bird. <laughs> You never know, right? We can still rip the boss off the top though. Or a bat or a ball or something. I mean, they're doing a good job in tinning and everything, but still benching Cramorant is kind of suicide in this spot. That's really a necessary risk, I think. But still though, um, if I have stamp, they're probably screwed without the recovery anyway, right? So it makes reasonable sense. But it is, it is pretty sus. I don't think I would have done it without looking at my hand. <laughs> it might have forgotten that Cramorant has lighting weakness. That could be a factor. Man, this turn has taken about six minutes, I think. All right, another crystal. I mean, let's see, guys. Ooh, let's see if the deck gives us something. I think the last of them was kind of incredible, though, missing all the outs we had to dig further and uh, set up for properly for the next round or next turn here. Okay, so we lose the single attachment. So we always lose, unless we draw something off the top here. Stamp is not really good enough. It's it's kind of boss, right? It's just it's just about the boss always. Yeah, that's not good enough. Okay, I wanna I wanna check how many outs we missed out on again. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 15. In the last 20 cards, 15 of the cards would actually be good enough for us. Holy crap, guys. That's incredible, right? That's just borderline insane. Like, what? I, I have to check that again. What? One, two, three, four, five, eight, eleven, fifteen, twenty cards. Jeez. Wow. Okay. 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 I mean, I'll I'll write down down that as a good enough reason to list this game. And also with those 15 cards, if we didn't have the Denny here either, there, like actually last price, then it would also be okay. I mean, at some point, you just can't play around the odds anymore, right? 
But that, that was hella crazy, guys. Oh my god. <laughs> Alright. The point of playing a lot of games, though, is gonna be that hopefully we can balance out this bad luck eventually, right? Okay. Um, missed 15 out of 20 outs left in the Off to a bit of a rough start here, not gonna lie. This is uh, pretty horrible, but there was pretty good reasons for losing those games though. As in big F in chat, guys. Big F. Ugh. Big X, man. <laughs> Let's see if it balances out eventually, though. Do not worry. Axwin, uh, thank you so much for the follow. Welcome, welcome. All right, we're going second. We have Bolton and that's a crowbat, but this is grass leaves and box though, and a grass actually. All right, we good. <laughs> we we got this. I think the grass decks often plays uh, power plants, as I don't really want to play into that. So I'm thinking we could just go um, with the lightning Pokemon this game. We price Coco though. All right, charging up to peak. Yeah, they often play like triple pole plant in the grass decks, I think so. This emote is towards sacking the next 10 games after bad RNG. I mean, we'll try, we'll try. All right, this is better free, but they play Crushing Hammer and Turbo Patch. <laughs> You're playing Turbo Patch with Grookey? Man, come on. This is, this is childish. Why would you do this? All right, so, um... We price the Coco, right? So you can't really attack this turn, which is kind of unfortunate with the hammerheads and everything, but uh, at least we can uh, we can set up more. Alright, I think another one to peek, just in case another hammerheads and uh, to right here. Got to power up the better free somehow. Yeah, but do you really need both? Like both patches and the Rillaboom? Yeah, this is definitely going fast. Yo, with the Dust Island, I've seen everything now. Uh, officially seen everything on Pizza Geo. Big Charm, and another Dissing Poison, okay. I mean, I guess now we can't kill it because it has the Big Charm, <laughs> so. All right. We are charging up all the things here. I 
think I do this for a big GX attack. Would also be helpful. And then we also have Bolton for a one shot as well, so. Get those attacks here if you're afraid of another hammerheads there. Because then I wouldn't have to GX attack the bird for VMAX. Nah, it seems like it doesn't really matter. Alright. First time as in Dust Island played. Yeah, it's not often as in Dust Island in any deck either, honestly. Right, looking good this game at least. That that's something, right guys? <laughs> it's okay to get some free wins here and there. Yup, yup. All right. Update the score. Write it down. Game five. That was a win again. That was against uh, Better Free Hammers. And the reason was they played better free. Yep. Pidgeot, sorry about that. 59 and 20 odds here is a better free deck to face. <laughs> That's reasonable, right, H2? A really rough start, though. Did not expect to lose two games so early. I was like, if it was double alternatives, it would be fine. But this is decks that we should have okay control against. Can't wait to see the spreadsheet. <laughs> Yo, same. How many bed free decks will be included? That's the question. All right, it's a Mewtwo. I was a little spooked about the Dark Box, but uh, a Mewtwo deck we can normally handle. We do play Mewtwo's ourselves though, so. Oh, this is uh, normally just coming down to the amount of bosses each player can throw at each other. Oh, well, they play Redactyl as well, that's kind of spicy. So they have a one energy and two energy way to kill our Mewtwo's. And also Incineroar. Yo, they have a way to kill all their stuff. All right, so it's probably just gonna be a game of a boss. I have the Coco already. Yeah. They have a Welder though. But do they have energy? Would they even pick the energy or attach to anything if they don't didn't have anything? This again they only have three cards though. I don't think it's worth going Marnie for that reason. And I also get these in the discard pile, I guess. And the lightning engine discard pile. Yeah, it's probably better to go research anyway. We priced one balloon, one switch, and discarding one switch. Though. That's a little spooky. But we have Bat and the Dennis, though. A lot of outs. And all right, that's that's pretty good actually. Good potential at least. Scarring a lot of Marnies. Probably still okay. Yeah, so we have to get we have to get the Bolton at least. How are they doing on switch? Only one switch. I could bench her right you in case we were to miss. But then oh, I want to, I have to use the radar. Discarding Marnie and I could miss the energy if I don't attach it. Then again, if I miss my attacker, then this is horrible. I think we're less likely to miss 
are, are we? Wait, okay, we have just two. We have two meters left only as good attackers. But we have three quick bots, that's five. But we have a lot more energies left than five, so. Yeah. There is 11 energies and only, yeah. Way few routes for the good attacker. So Raj is gonna be the backup in case we missed Mewtwo. Optimally, I'll want two Mewtwo here. So I can split energies on them even. I got one Mewtwo at least. That's so many lightning. <laughs> Holy crap. Is, do I have enough lightning left in the deck to pick up any now? Oh, that's, uh, that's so sketchy. Okay. I do. So I'm doing a split on energies here, uh, in case uh, the Mewtwo dies. And we still have Raichu at least. Make it a live Google Sheet and pin it in Discord. I could do that actually, Pandage. I can look into that. Yo, what's up, Blue Shark? How are you today? I'm doing good? Wow, we're pretty close to Wave Energy. Yeah, I mean, that was that was a little too many energies, unfortunately. <laughs> there were still four left in the deck, though. The thing is, since we got uh, a pretty clunky hand there, I had to pick up Mewtwo and couldn't really pick up... Uh, what I actually wanted, which was a draw Pokemon for next turn. Uh, but I figured I had to have the Mewtwo ready. Okay, if we find a boss, say they don't attack. Why would they ever attack here though? Oh, really? Okay, okay, okay. This uh, suddenly got really interesting. <laughs> We're still okay though. Okay, they are down. Tree switch? Okay, a Pyrolyzer is just incredible then. Okay, I rather want to lose my Raichu than the Mewtwo. So I'm gonna attack with the Raichu. That's a really good top deck as well, actually. Um, okay. Yeah, I'd rather save the Mewtwo if I can. It's worth more to me than the Raichu. I'm gonna have to GX it. It actually prevents me from killing it. You guys, you guys see that, right? Just <laughs> making sure. Okay, but if, that, if they are down three switches, then this should most likely stick, right? Toward weakness, use weakness. Why, <laughs> Mellow, please. <laughs> he has last switch hundred percent. That I mean, that's still fine, right? Because we still kill him and they don't have a real answer to our next Mewtwo again, right? So even then, we're still okay. Depending if we can draw a draw card, of course, but... I mean, eventually we should. I don't think they have a response the next turn again. And then, yeah. Like, even if they have the last switch. And then we have prices here. With bad no KO. <laughs> okay. Now if now if they get the switch we have a problem though. Big charm there? Okay. Alright. Yeah. They did not get there. Great. Okay, that's a radar as well, so things should be looking fine. Um yeah, it's still gonna be a stamp to one. And all that. Do you guys think they have a way to get rid of the Rachi? Like exile or something, so they can suddenly hit for weakness again? Or is that just me being super paranoid at this point? Oz? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, so it's so long since AC was actually illegal. Hmm. All right. I 
could actually damage the other Mewtwo as well. That's pretty weak to duo, I guess, but if they go duo, they don't do anything good for their turn. But that also blocks off their Dedenna for next turn, and I know they don't have a uh, switch in hand. So maybe just going boss there and hitting the other one is actually the best play. It's going to be the same outcome, right? Except it's a little bit safer for next turn. I think I kind of like that, actually. You don't get punished by switch boss. But they know they don't have switch, so they have the top deck switch and naturally have a boss. This looks like a pretty good play to me. Blocking all the Dene, they're down three welders. Shouldn't be too many more ways to draw cards. Telescopic Sight? Does that matter on Mewtwo now? You can kill Crobats, certainly, but... Alright, they play a one of research and they had it in hand. Okay, okay. So it's a 50-50 to get the last switch. They had 14 cards. Exactly 50-50 if they draw the switch there. And if they draw the switch... Um... Actually, hmm... If they draw the switch, we are in a bad spot, right? Because then I can't prevent the Naga Nadal. Or maybe this was actually a bad play. Depends on if they have the switch or not, right? So. Okay, they don't have the switch. Hmm. Because I could have paired the... Since I don't get the Paralyze there, I could have paired it with a Stamp to 1 instead. I'm suddenly, suddenly unsure if it was correct or not. Yeah, now they can go... Now they can go duo on the Dene, I guess. Then I'm in the same spot where I go Tandem Shock, Stamp. I need to keep my Stamp at least. So I don't want the Marnie, since I want to stamp next turn. And then we're just killing it. And promoting something they can't do. What if we switch to do now? Um, I mean, that's still fine, because then they're out of switch, and then we can paralyze uh, them both. And then you go paralyze, they pass. And then you go kill, and then you take a kill as well, and then you go um, Paralyze, and it still can't switch, and then you go game. Yeah, this is the scenario, right? And then I go Duo, then I go Stamp to 1, Paralyze, and then we see if they have it or not. Here, let's see. There is no swell for me to dig for anyway. So there's nothing for me to get. I can get a boss, I guess. Um, but that should be guaranteed anyway. Yeah. So I'm just gonna just gonna stamp and tandem shock and hope they don't hit switch. Actually, stamp to two now, not one. Hmm, still thinking. Maybe there was a little too much IQ play what I did. Maybe I outplayed myself. Should just kill the active and then go stamp to one paralyze. I guess it was, I guess it was probably better. I didn't get the switch. I mean, both chat, both plays had really good odds of winning the game, but hmm. Oh yeah, they didn't boss the mute because we don't have weakness. Alright, game six, win, matchup, Mewtwo Welder, Reason, uh, Yorachi made things awkward, but 
tandem shock prevailed. GG, GG. All right, so now we are, yeah, we're six, six games in here. Skip is a clue on the Archie and boss from you too. Skip is a clone? That's, that's an old ace pick. That's a really old ace pick. What's up with us drawing all the energies though? Hmm. Let's see if we can get the Bolton start. That would be great. Not having to dig for it. Oh, I almost saw a Bolton here. Hmm. Oh, do we open the Denna or Pika though? As I said, it's much easier to retreat to the Denna than it is to retreat to Pika. You know what? I hate opening Pika. I rather open the Denna actually. If we miss the ret retreat, we just lose, right? So. Does four Bolton sure are good? Hey, imagine playing fewer. Can't open with it anyway, right? <laughs> All right, pick up the Bolton. And okay, against Sation, they usually don't play poor plant. So I could try going in with Muta here. Nice. Um, could go double Bolton. Nah, I can match it later. Playing around Marnie by doing this. They probably don't want to research search a big hand if they want to continue playing it, so. Playing down around Marnie seems good. And then we go here, yeah. What is this build? This is the four Bolton stack. Crushing Hammer, Crushing Hammer. You have a good deck. <laughs> okay, at least Coco is not priced this game, so. Uh, we can still pick up the energy here. It's like we, we're still able to attack. We just need to dodge another heads again. How are you? Santa's Gorge VMAX is a good deck. Yeah, it's a pretty good deck, Jimmy. Pretty good deck. This is no hammer peak deck. No, it's no hammer. <laughs> This is uh, the good pick, as I like to think. No hammers needed, just a shit ton of Boltons. Alright, I'm okay with that, since we do have the switch anyway. Maybe they're gonna Marnie on top of it. No, they used research, right? Yeah, yeah, never mind. No, wait. Oh yeah, they just had a really big hand, obviously, of course. They played on all the hands. The turn one GX attack? All right, all right. So we need to answer with Tandem Shock of our own. Can we trade? Our question you have to exchange to V and V Max? I don't really report. You can ask the chat if they have any. Mm, let's see. So we go attach, and then we go... I kind of just want to go research, honestly, and not bench the right tree. Okay, so we need a Coco. That's a Coco. Ah, perfect. Beautiful, actually. All right, so then I can um, power up another Mewtwo as well, if you want to. Yeah, probably want to do that. Go double Mewtwo this game. So I'm gonna go Tandem Shock. Yeah. Mm, 
we have we have enough energy in deck to execute this strat as well. So I think it could work out. It depends on them though. All right, Tandem Shock, and then we're blitzing onto this, and then we are tag bolting, and let's see if that's enough. This build plays a two peak and two ray, actually, Dave. So we don't have to price either of them. And if we're gonna play this many games, we don't want to take a 10% loss each time we price a peak or two or a right two. So with this play, I'm hoping it forces them to bench uh, a support Pokemon if they want to get out of the Paralyze. Oh my god. Okay, that's obviously just much better though. Uh, and uh, we take those. We do not complain when uh, these things happen. Yeah, we attach and then we Marnie and hope I don't draw into how many lightning can I run into? Three. I don't. I can't run into three lightning. All right. There's only one lightning, so that should be fine. Okay. And now we go blitz. I mean charge and. We have double stamps still. Uh, okay, so if they burn something, we can tag ball for game. If they don't burn something, we um, can right you and kill the station. And then they need another boss on top of that, uh, the one they need this turn. Oh, one pick just happens to be priced. Um, yeah, I think one pick is priced now. Well played. Does that mean they missed, or they think they got the game? Oh, they have to bench the Dana. I see. That makes sense. Then it's probably game, yeah. The best way to play against the Turntus is you go, you open with Bolton, you charge uh, Mewtwo or um, uh, Peak or Raichu. Uh, if you can charge uh, Mewtwo, that's better. And then. You hope you don't die. If you die, you have to paralyze and hope you don't die. If you die again, you are in trouble. <laughs> then you would have to have uh, the Coco Pop uh, on your attacker and the next attacker the round before. So you have another attacker ready on the following turn again. And then again, you have to hope your opponent does not kill you. Straight up catcher? All right. I see how you play, mate. <laughs> I see how it is. Yeah, the turn to matchup is bad. We can't get around that, guys. But uh, we have a really consistent deck otherwise. So it, that's the trade-off we're taking. All right, and we tag bolting this and killing the monkey. And that's the game. I think the ADP matchup is very manageable. That's only because we have the muted though. So we have the tank needed, they can't scrap it, and they need to boss around it, or find the Leon, or play something like Siggy or Bander, or anything. Would Hammers help to turn this matchup? Let's try them. It would help the matchup, but it would be adding a lot of random elements into our deck for everything else, and I don't really like that. You know that, Mello. All right, that was against ADP, ADBZ, I guess. Uh, they missed switch after AC, after altered creation. And like, if you miss the switch there, you're just, you're always just dead, right? So, 